I've alluded to the fact that I'm not a huge fan of airline credit cards, and while they do serve a purpose for some consumers, here's 10 reasons why I think you should avoid airline credit cards at all cost. What is going on everyone? I hope you are all having a fantastic day. So the first reason I don't like airline credit cards is the lower value signup bonuses. There are exceptions to this one, like some of the Delta Sky Miles credit cards, but for the most part, brand specific credit cards occasionally toss you a small signup bonus or maybe a free checked bag or a free hotel stay if it is a hospitality credit card. But when compared to normal, more general travel credit cards in a similar category, like the Chase Sapphire Preferred or Capital One Venture cards, the points that you earn from those card signup bonuses are worth significantly more in 95% of cases. And considering the signup bonus that a credit card offers is one of the biggest reasons that I might choose to get a card in the first place, Obviously, this one is a big deal. That brings us to the second reason that I don't like airline credit cards, and that is the oftentimes complex point redemption process. Most of the time, these cards will give you airline-specific loyalty rewards, meaning you'll earn Delta Sky Miles or British Airways Avios points. Regardless of what the brand calls their points, you are almost always locked into that airline or maybe a few Alliance airlines, but I've also run into issues with blackout dates, limited reward seats, for cardholders and frustrating redemption websites that are not nearly as well designed and easy to use as the general credit card providers. I've even heard horror stories of airlines revamping their loyalty programs and overnight, a customer's frequent flyer miles might be worth half as much. Reason number three is the limited opportunity to earn bonus miles on regular everyday spending categories. Some of my favorite general travel credit cards are things like the Capital One Venture X card, which offers 10 points per on certain travel purchases, and even products like the American Express Gold Card can give you four points per dollar on dining and groceries, making it really easy to rack up bonus points in places where you're already spending a lot of money. Compare that to airline credit cards who might offer you two or three points per dollar on spending with the airline, but outside of that, you're not gonna earn that much in terms of your regular everyday spending categories. And once again, this just shows that you are really locked into that airline and that loyalty program. I am all about using my credit cards on things that I would be purchasing anyways, earning points on those general spending categories and using those rewards to book travel that I would have otherwise had to pay out of pocket. But many of these airline cards don't meet any of those criteria, so why would I waste my time with them? The fifth reason you might want to avoid airline specific credit cards is if you spend a lot of money on travel in general. I've been traveling throughout Europe over the past few months and had I been using the airline specific credit card instead of my Capital One Venture X card, I would have missed out on hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of bonus point multipliers and foregone benefits because once again, airline specific credit cards don't usually offer great bonus rewards on general travel spending, which means any excursions or activities or experiences that you do while traveling aren't really going to earn that much towards your next travel experience. All right, we are halfway there with the biggest red flags yet to come, but the sixth reason is limited protections and insurance when it comes to actually traveling. High-end general travel credit cards like the Venture X or Amex Platinum not only give you trip and cancellation insurance in most cases, but also car rental insurance, medical coverage, trip delay insurance, and a number of other protections that give you immense peace of mind when you're actually traveling. There are a few airline credit cards that offer such benefits, but they are typically fairly limited and have very, very high annual fees. Speaking of annual fees, the seventh reason to avoid airline credit cards is, you guessed it, the overpriced annual fees. A majority of the airline credit cards fall in that $95 per year range, and while that's a very common and affordable price point within the credit card industry as a whole, the value that you get for $95 per year when compared to general $95 per year credit cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred just doesn't even compare. 
The Sapphire Preferred comes in at $95 per year, but easily pays for itself with the premium benefits, while many of the luxury airline cards that offer these benefits end up costing $500 per year or more, and while there are some that charge no annual fee, the benefits in a lot of cases leave a lot to be desired. All right, we've got three reasons left to avoid these airline credit cards, including by far the worst issue with these products, but the eighth reason is the confusing and overwhelming number of products to choose from when it comes to these airline credit cards. Now, some might view this as a benefit because options could be a good thing, but some airlines offer the same card with four or more different tiered options with slightly different benefits and different price points. But unless you are always flying with the exact same airline and you know exactly which benefits you're looking for, picking out which card is going to be best for you and give you the most value can be next to impossible, and you'll almost always end up having to carry and open multiple credit cards just to match one general travel credit card. And I don't know about you, but my wallet only holds a few credit cards, so I'm not able to carry around 12 different credit cards for every possible airline. All right, this ninth reason doesn't apply to a majority of airline credit cards in fairness, but the fact that it applies to any of them drives me absolutely nuts, and that is the fact that some of these airline credit cards still charge foreign transaction fees. Maybe if you are a domestic-only airline, I will give you a free pass, but the fact that any airline credit card charges a foreign transaction fee just seems ridiculous in my opinion, especially considering that many of them cost a lot of money, and there are many better products on the market that cost way less, offer better benefits, and and charge no foreign transaction fee. But lastly, the 10th and by far most aggravating thing that I hate about airline specific credit cards is, as we've talked about throughout the whole video, the fact that in many ways you are locked into just one airline loyalty program. Obviously, just because you have a Delta credit card, for example, doesn't mean that you're not able to board an American Airlines flight. But if you want to earn rewards on all of your travel purchases, regardless of the brand, then then that's going to be next to impossible with an airline-specific credit card. Delta isn't going to give you extra bonus miles when you buy a United ticket and vice versa, so in my opinion, you're just better off getting a general product and earning 5 to 10 points per dollar in most cases on a majority of your travel purchases regardless of the brand. Plus, like I mentioned earlier, even when you do earn points through a specific airline that you're loyal to, you can usually only redeem those miles with that airline or associated alliance airlines, which once again just limits your flexibility and makes booking way more confusing than it has to be. All right, but that does bring us to one thing that I do want to talk about before wrapping this one up, and that is the cases where an airline credit card may actually make sense. The most common scenario is if you do in fact fly with the exact same airline airline all the time. If you're frequently traveling all over the place, then this probably is not the case, but if you just travel for work or you're leaving from the exact same airport all the time, then it's very possible that a specific airline may have a hub at your local airport, and therefore you probably fly with that airline 99% of the time. In my case, it's Southwest at my local airport, so that does actually make sense for me, but if that's the case for you, then getting a free checked bag or automatic loyalty reward board upgrades are well worth it, and paying a small annual fee each year for that will easily pay for itself in most scenarios. Additionally, airline-specific credit cards can often be the cheapest and easiest way to access airline lounges that may otherwise only be available to some of the most expensive general travel credit cards like the Amex Platinum. And in my experience, if you compare a general priority pass lounge to some of these airline-specific lounges like Delta Sky Miles or the United club lounges, the airline lounges are usually way, way nicer, they have way better food, are way more comfortable, so again, that alone might be worth it. Plus, you can sometimes get a companion certificate in some cases, which can get you a free airline ticket and allow your companion to access these lounges as well. But for myself and a majority of consumers, you would almost always be better off just getting a general travel credit card, having significantly more redemption options, increased point multipliers on general spending 
independent categories and significantly more protections and insurance when you're actually traveling. But as always, that is just my opinion. So I'd love to know what you think of this debate down in the comment section below and whether or not you feel an airline specific credit card makes sense for your financial situation. Again, it's really going to depend on a case by case basis and where you're spending most of your money and what airlines you typically fly with. But in my experience, unless you are neck deep in the rewards credit card space and trying to maximize your spending as much as possible, it's just way easier for everyday consumers to get a general travel credit card, redeem those points in flexible ways for travel purchases, and call it a day. Be sure to check out some of my favorite financial tools using those links down below the like button, many of which will give you some free cash when you sign up, which we always love. As always, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it so much. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.